Hello everybody, JT Bear here. Thank you for joining me yet again on another absolutely fabulous Sunday for a visit around the garden. Today uh, I'm finally going to be getting around to uh, picking all those pickling peppers. That's kind of fun to say. And uh, yeah, I want to show you a few other things that are of course going on with the pepper shrine. And we'll take a look at everything else as well. Alright, stick around and we'll get started. Let's go. So this is kind of a swamp and a tote now, but basically this is my duckweed tote. You can see a little bit of it floating on the surface there. Anything and everything that I'm composting in the greenhouse at the moment is going into the water where it eventually sinks down. I've got my piece of PVC pipe here. I stir it around every once in a while. Keeps some oxygen in that water just a little bit anyway. Stuff the cat mint back in here. It doesn't seem to be reacting well, but it was half dead when I put it in there, so... Not necessarily the tote's fault, but tote's probably not helping. Duckweed's doing alright, though. Seems to be growing fairly well. Some major changes to the main aquaponic garden as of late. Sure looks different without those broccoli in the back there. That fan seems to be doing a pretty good job for 10 bucks, I'd say. Keeping the airflow going. Got some rope here tied up a really cheesy trellis, but at least this year it should stay attached. Now I get the opportunity to go in there and see how many tomatoes are actually forming, maybe cut out some of those interior branches, get a little airflow going through there. Those elderberries are looking pretty good. I think I'm going to try transplanting a couple of those into soil, maybe even taking them out front. I don't know. Maybe that should be a week-long process or so. A little bit of time in the shed in the box to transition. We'll see. How are the fish doing? The fish are always doing good. Just chilling. Still working on transplanting over the pepper shrine. Got a few of them switched over though. They seem to be doing pretty well, I'd say. This garlic in the back look like they could use some water. I don't know, maybe I'll just pull them up, see how they're doing. I'm all about the peppers this year anyway. There's the jalapeno jalapa in the back there. Cute little peppers forming on that. Not going to be taking any of those today. Here's that red chili in the Folgers can I've got tucked in the Frankenponix. Coming back pretty well, I'd say, for something that just gets watered by hand. Lavender and the mint. There's willows in the back. It's uh, getting on time to plant them on to, into something else, I think. This DWC tote may or may not be coming out soon. The uh, roots on those two plants have just gotten insane. Kind of unmanageable. New projects in the future there. This tomato here in the uh, Frankenponic seems to be doing alright. Getting some flower starts on it. Some flower starts down there. As awesome as all of that is, today is all about those peppers though, because I am getting ready to pickle some peppers. I'm going to pick some stuff up when I grab shocks from work today. And uh, yeah, look for pickling peppers episodes coming soon. Possibly pickling baby beets too. We're going to take a look at those today and see, uh, I don't know if I've got enough to be worth the try or not, but they're wilting in the heat of the day. They got to go, so pull them now so they don't get wasted, I figure. Kind of the same deal going on with those onions in the gnome garden. We'll take a look at that too. Looking like so far so good for that grapevine I tucked in there. No idea if it's rooting or not because it's still attached to the main plant, but it's certainly not suffering. So that's good. You can see the grapes setting in on the vines here. Oh, that's fabulous. Not what I'm here for today though. Easily distracting though, aren't they? Today I'm here for peppers for pickling. And these early jalapenos, some of them, are actually ready to go. So, let's see how many I can get off of this plant here. Well, these plants. There's three in this particular tote. Then I'll get back to you. Well, these four little guys there, and the one that fell off in my hand this morning is inside, so that'll be five. Perfect, because they're not the uh, primary pepper we're pickling today. Neither are these long red cayennes. Again, not quite ready, but I'm going to throw a couple of them in there anyway, just because they had that interesting taste in the pre-ripe stage. So I'll get a couple of those. These beauties are the main peppers we're going to be pickling. So they're 
finally going to find purpose. Excellent. We tasted one of these last night. It was absolutely fabulous in the chicken. Can't wait to have them pickled. And there are so many flower starts on the top. I'm bound to get at least one more crop out of this, if not two. Fantastic. Time to start clipping. Well, that's a much different look for these plants. And that should definitely be enough for this batch of pickled peppers. Which reminds me. If Peter Piper picked a pack of pre-pickled peppers, I want to know who this Peter Piper fella is, and I want some of those seeds. I've heard of salsa pepper, but uh, pre-pickled peppers? I want some of those seeds. Anyway, let's carry on. This little guy is not going into our uh, pickled peppers, but this is the first of the uh, Bolivian Rainbow Freak peppers. It's starting to produce fruit, so very exciting. On our way to the front really quick here, you can see the gnome garden. All of my onions have basically fallen over, so I'm going to be harvesting most of those. Dehydrating and pickling, can't quite decide. Got a lot of pickling going on, so probably dehydrating. We'll see what comes of that. Guess it's more nutrients for the peppers and tomatoes then, isn't it? Those chives will get to stay. These beets have been a right pain though to keep moist enough throughout the heat of the day. And when I pulled one of these the other day, it was about radish sized. So, we'll take a look. Uh, that one's pretty tiny, isn't it? Anyway, pickled baby beets. I think that's their future. For the final splash of color, I am going to grab these purple peppers. Little blues is what they're called, but sure looks purple to me. Those should be pretty potent when pickled. All right, time to get snipping. Well, I got most of them off there. Love the flowers on this plant. So here we have the harvest for the pickled peppers. That is gonna be fabulous. Take those inside so they can get out of the heat now that they're off the plants. All right, with the peppers out of the way, I guess next up we've got this bucket of beets. I did learn a few things with this and uh, I will definitely be trying that uh, make your own seed tape that Luke showed everybody. Luke from MI Gardener, just in case you guys don't know. Um, buckets, sure, maybe with less beets, why not? I think a catchment bucket underneath this to uh, get the water that was going straight through might have been a good idea. Perhaps in this particular region, shade cloth might have been a good idea. But let's get to picking these and uh, seeing what we've got in amongst the weeds in my beet bucket. One at a time then, I guess. Oh, that's a cute little guy. All right, this could take a while. So I think I will show you the results. At the end of it all, here we have a bunch of beets that just barely even started. Produced tops, but that's it. And over here we have a bunch of, uh, you know, some of them are kind of cute. But these are the ones that I figure will be big enough to uh, cut up and at least test a pickled beet with. These other ones though, since I'm not too fond of wasting things, I think I'm going to replant these in the gnome garden after I pull out the onions. Alright. Not a record breaking harvest, but definitely enough to try a quick pickle. Perhaps after these guys are uh, planted in the gnome garden, have a couple more months to go, we take another look at them, then maybe we'll be looking at something more substantial. Either way, I better get those back into some soil pretty soon. Alright, so I'm going to pull the vast majority of these up because the wind is damaging them something fierce and the rain and I don't even know what and that one broke off. Alright, this is a two-handed thing. I'll show you what I get out of that. <laughs> okay, I stand corrected. I came out way better on those onions than I expected. Maybe I will get to pickle and dehydrate some of those. Fantastic. Much easier to see those red Thai peppers and the indigo rose. Got a volunteer tomato over here. Kind of hoping it's yet another one of those uh, sweet Juliet hybrids. That would be fantastic. Really enjoyed those tomatoes. Definitely got some weeding to do. I'm sure you all would love to watch me do that, but I'll save you that boring probably 45 minutes, I would guess. And we'll get back to it when the beets are going in. May not be perfect, but that definitely looks better. Getting pretty warm out here, though. 
Might be a good idea to pre-soak that soil before I start sticking these poor beets in it. That's a lot more space for the beets than in that little bucket. But now we're up to one of those points where my lack of forward thinking is creating an obstacle in my path. Need to hose down the gnome garden, but the garden hose is buried under onions, so... Alright, gotta move those first, I guess. Okay, so maybe I'm a little fixated on these onions at the moment, but... I cost four bucks and a little bit of time. I'm pretty sure I'm getting my monies back out of that. I am blown away. Never grown onions before. We'll now take the whole concept much more seriously in the future. Great return. And now I can water the beets. Well watered and ready to wait. <laughs> we'll check back on these guys next week. See how they're doing. That one pepper seems to be doing alright though. I think I see a little couple of flowers on it. Excellent. Up here in the front yard we can see everything is very, very green. Except of course for those little tiny tomatoes. Which are of course purple. But, I guess I need to head inside and deal with all those onions that I just brought out. I was uh, not expecting anywhere near that much of a haul. So, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining me everybody. There will probably be a couple of uh, random quick videos along the way until next Sunday. But, uh, otherwise, I will see you guys next Sunday. Take care everybody.